Hello and good morning. So, uh, yeah, doing a weird start in the middle of a fight here because, you know, wanted to, uh, to show something that was a little funny. So, I noticed a while ago, um, that for whatever reason, uh, cursed weapons have a tendency to vaporize people. So, uh, yeah. Basically, if there's any specific time here, I don't know if it's just on crits, but if there's any time where they're already killed by the first shot, um, you have a buff on and, well, they still have another hit going. Um, it doesn't seem like this happens if they're just killed by the weapon itself, it seems to be with a buff, but yeah, they'll just basically get deleted out of existence, which is hilarious. One of the few uh, redeeming factors of these weapons, in fact. So I got a lot of people using a lot of different stuff now. Um, actually, I think I'll go over this more in the next bit. This is actually part of the reason that I called her Dagger the Vaporizer. But anyway... Um, it sounds like these things are actually going to be potentially deleted from the game, which I'm perfectly fine with, I'll be honest. For, um, for how much friggin' effort it took to get them? Uh, man, they are not the Snapdragons of the past. Holy dang. Okay, um, I still have equipped everybody, like, roughly based off of, um, off the assumption that they'll be using them. So, like, for example, I have Denim set up here with the, uh, Longinus and Horizon. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's, uh, from Sots the Pit. Basically, it's this... Pretty much a... Semi-automatic Magnum with a friggin' bayonet on it. <laughs> it's, uh, one of the starting weapons that you can... You can potentially get from one of the classes. And it is just, like, bar none my favorite item in that entire game. They're like... Because it's, like, this class that's just a bug. Like, all this other stuff... Kinda trash. And he just has this gun that's amazingly good. And, well, he basically has to base everything around using that gun. And doesn't have the stats for it to start off with. So, you know, that's nice. Anyway, that's uh, that's a whole other thing anyway. And, um, yeah, need to get through this fight so we can do patch notes. Because 87A is out. So, um, yeah. Got some new stuff finally. Actually, it looks like uh, Dragons finally got their, uh, their friggin' resonances fixed. So we'll be looking over that. Actually, screw it, I might as well just go over them now. So yeah, instruments got changed to dex weapons, damask blowguns provided, correct status immunities, apparently they weren't doing that before. Uh, cursed weapon, or cursed uh, 1H weapons have proper range. Which actually, I was very tempted to go back and switch, uh, to show, because oh my god, it was ridiculous. There was, uh, <laughs> there was a thing with the one-handed fusel where the thing had, I think, like, ten tiles of range, as opposed to its five that's intended. But, uh, oh yeah, and a quick break from the patch notes real quick to show this thing. Uh, this is one of many systems that they apparently put in the game, balanced for the absurdly early game. Like, it only affects damage and stuff like that, and percentages, I think, by, I, as far as I've seen, only up to, like, four percent, or four damage. But clearly the sliders can go really far out there, so I'm curious to see if this uh, system will potentially be repurposed into something amazing. Because yeah, obviously they intended it to go pretty far. Because again, far is the f four is the farthest I've ever seen it go, and like the little friggin' smidge to the right. It's like uh, let's see here, and it looks like about a pixel. So that's a lot of pixels to go. Anyway, she's not terribly useful yet. Uh, Kashua, despite her tremendous level disadvantage, actually is pretty useful right now. Um, actually a little bit surprising how much damage she puts out for, uh, what level she is. Eh, can't even use it. But she's still doing, like, up to 80s uh, with, um, with her current stats. And Bloody Gag is pretty friggin' amazing, I gotta say. Uh, this is her, uh, heretic class, by the way. It used to be the Dark Priest. Uh, basically a frontline heavy caster, more or less. Uh, Deneb is here as a witch key, um, or witch, wiki, whatever, but she's not terribly useful, so she's just gonna sit back here. And, uh, yeah, as far as awesome stuff with, uh, with these cursed weapons, though, if you actually can do damage with them, they do quite a bit. Right there. I did, like, 180. But that's the thing, um, the closest equivalent, really, to, um to how these work 
if I were to compare them with any other game, would just be, like, freaking hollow points or something in most shooters. It's just high damage if you can get past the armor. If you can't, they're just gonna do piss all. And that's about it. Like before, he was doing 37 with this. Um, he was doing 90 with the uh, Longinus. Or now, it's 139 against this guy, and then only 214 uh, with uh, the spear. But bear in mind, this thing hits twice. So it, it would essentially be uh, 278, as opposed to 214 with the spear. So he can just one-shot that guy. And this is before instills and stuff like that. Which is funny, because the usual drawback of Fusiliers is they don't get instills or elemental stuff, really. And, um... Well, there you go. He gets it. His friggin' Lord class and is amazing. And that's kind of the weird part of, uh... Whenever they were balancing it in the first place. I, I don't know why they gave the Lord everything except for friggin' guns. Um, the only thing I could think of was that potentially somewhere in that, uh, development line they maybe intended it, maybe they built Fusiliers later because they seem to run off different mechanics. Um, I mean, there's a lot of weirdness to it. But, uh, yeah, heard that from Rakes as well. Apparently there's a whole bunch of weird systems that they put in. Wasn't really clear what they were planning to use for what. Apparently there were, in, uh, as far as cursed weapons go, um, we have a situation here where all other weapons, you know, had their specific data entry in there. Um, they specific, um, had certain things set aside. Apparently, for the cursed weapons, despite there being, I think, like, 12 of them or something like that? 11 or 12? Um, they use 51 entries, he said? Because apparently they made one version for, uh, each of the unused weapons, one version for each of the used weapons, and then one more copy that was just kind of there for no apparent reason. Um, again, just like many things, they, they seemingly went and developed all this early game stuff. They balanced the early game stuff. They developed all the, like, full friggin' years of content, and then not a whole lot happened there. Uh, hang on. I mean, it, the customizable names are really main thing that I like about these. It's kind of cool to have a sort of potentially huge damage against an armored you know, kind of weapon. Some of them are absolutely pointless, like um, friggin' two-hander is, there's no point to it. Their whole shtick is they're there to break armor and stuff like that. So you have no reason to go take a heavy tanky class, drag it all the way to the back so that they can do very slightly more against squishy targets. Um, they're one particular Potential benefit, maybe, is if you use them as a uh, as a caster, but it's not like they have the kind of uh, skill sets put together to be able to constantly do that. So then they would just run into an MP issue. Then they would just run into a being able to actually get kills issue. It's just there's so many more effective ways to do it. So personally, my vote is absolutely entirely for just erase that crap because. Uh, there's so much cooler stuff that could be done with it. Um, and yeah, um, I've actually been been equipping uh, Denim and uh, Canopus here with uh, different with uh, standard tier melee weapons, uh, pretty much to take advantage of the fact that they still need an armor piercing weapon if their ranged stuff doesn't work. And Again, I'm I'm really only using them for grinding because I don't like the idea of a weapon that doesn't work sometimes. Um, it's one of the big things for why I never. Um, yeah, I just want to get his fusils up right now. Um, it's one of the big things for why I never, ever, ever wanted to use energy weapons growing up in Armored Core. It was just one of these cases where I, it's like I don't I don't trust that thing. That thing's gonna glitch out on me and friggin' break. I don't trust lasers. Which, granted, there was absolutely no function for that, um, other than uh, charging, which is kind of its own situation. But, um, but yeah, generally speaking, even though it was a unreasonable thing to be worried about, it still freaked me out at all times. Like I said, not a fan of unreliable, but potentially amazing. Hmm. Yep. Oh, and guess what? 
Nopus seemingly just accomplished something that uh, I've never actually accomplished before. He's actually gotten enough points to be able to afford the immunity skills in the base game. Let's see, it only took him three entire runs through the game and Palace of the Dead and like 20 runs through Farampa and going through a couple of the fortresses. That took a minute. <laughs> that maybe was a tad too much for them to think of, uh, would be uh, would be a good idea. All right, now. Ooh, EPs. I want him to have more EPs. Is that even something I'm using on him? No, it's not. I will completely forget this idea now. Okay, so, uh, patch notes. Yeah, previously mentioned, in instruments are dex weapons now. Neat. Uh, Damask Blowgun does immunities. Cursed one-handed weapons at proper range. Ash Golan Shaw. Horizon. Which is inexplicably a holy gun, but whatever. He's weirdly set up for holy stuff. Um, so that was, by the way, that all just sort of fell together. There was no planning behind that. Um, uh, Canopuses, I, I switched him off uh, for that. I, I tried using the vaporizer on him. It did not work whatsoever, so that went to Kashua, and I mean, that was originally supposed to be his vaporizer, but the dagger doesn't work worth a crap for him, so he got his uh, aura dagger instead. That thing is amazing. Uh, Kaldia and Katetsu are much easier to craft at higher... Oh, and are higher level weapons, so their waist weight got reduced to two. All right, that's cool. Adjusted some weapon stats and level requirements to distribute them more evenly. I don't know why I'm freaking speaking weird, I apologize. Uh, which is nice, because I believe this thing was a level 28 sword before. That probably explains why I was looking forward to uh, using the Desert Blade at 26. Um, yeah, this thing used to... Or no. Yeah, this thing was, I'm pretty sure it was 26. Uh, now it's a 25. So I kind of accidentally jumped over it. And then the Gilgamesh is now at 26. Stasis at 20. So yeah, th these are a little bit easier to come by. I'm uh, pretty sure the Natos uh, used to be 37. There's the Soul Eater. Named it after um, after the ultimate weapon from um, uh, Legend of Dragoon, which it's nowhere near as good, but decided to give it to Trafalgar just to kind of hang on to it. I tried to do the uh, kind of double attacking Berserker combo thing, but uh, for whatever reason, this thing doesn't seem to actually add the stats that it says that it does. Like if I switch over to another one, like a Cavalry Axe here, his other weapon still does the same damage, so this would end up doing more damage than equip him, equipping him with a Kungal. I don't know what the point is other than slightly higher defense. I mean, okay, accuracy is a bit higher, and you, you know, avoidance is a little bit higher. That's all well and good, like, it's just purely defensive, but it doesn't actually add to the offensive stats, so, again, if it did, it, this this combination here would be amazing. Hmm. Eh, kind of a bummer, but whatever. Um, what else? And then the MLB Moonlight, just because I was planning to make it. Again, not exactly fantastic, but I assume she might get some use out of it actually planning to change her over to her Knight Commander class, but haven't quite done so yet. Okay, back to the patch notes. So, uh, replaced one of the mid-level 2H uh, Fusils with a one-handed one. It's craftable using the Fusil Enchilada. Uh, that would be the Belter, uh, which you can't use yet. Yeah, all my Fusiliers suddenly were holding Belters, which are these. Uh, basically, it's a level 25, 118 attack pistol. Um, really good, actually. It, finally, there's a level 20 to 30 gun, because there was just this weird jump where it just... Your last one was at 21, I think, and then that jumped all the way up to 33, so you had... <laughs> well, base game, you had an utterly useless gun for that point. Um, just did nothing. There was... By the time that you finished using your, a, a Rimfire plus one and got to a... Tila. There was just nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, the, the Rimfire stopped being useful around 25. It just went and plinked anything that wasn't a squishy target. So, and then even if something's squishy, it's doing like maybe 20 to 50. There was no point. No point in keeping it around for the wait, for the recovery time, nothing. 
anyway, uh, again, that it just seems like they balanced up to maybe 15 to 20-ish and then just threw the rest of the wind. Kind of threw it all out there and hoped that it stuck well. Um, yeah, very slightly adjusted stats of some, uh, uh, some gear pieces because calculations were off. Um, haven't seen a whole lot of that yet, but we'll see when it comes up. Uh, Dragons lost access to dash. Uh, with the liftoff change, they would be able to dash while flying. So I'd like to reserve that for native flyers, he says. So yeah, that dash got added to the flying move. Uh, Lord it gained access to HP infusion and conserve MP. Uh, he ended up with two wizard skills and none from Spellblade, so that's really useful. Um, I was considering to add it to him, but currently he's nigh invincible anyway, so... Uh, either way, I'll, uh, I'll probably add that in later. Um, slightly improved Hydra stats because they were a bit salty about the whole flying thing. And Hydras were pretty scary before, so it would be pretty interesting to see. Uh, okay, spells and actives. Um, Apocrypha level requirements got raised. First one was stronger than AoE spell fours, and you could use it much earlier. Fair enough. So I guess we will be able to use the Apocrypha stuff. Speaking of, actually, otherwise, can you learn any cool new dealies? I don't think so. I think I got her all her stuff that she can learn. Hmm. <clears throat> Hopefully, I'm not. Really nasally today. Long story. Freaking cat slept on my face. Um, okay. Back to this. Um, let's see. Fixed duration of slow on some skills. Um, apparently, slow is having issues. Uh, changed the visuals of resonance skills to something faster. Added protection versus elements to each. Okay. That'll be a lot more useful. Uh, lift off duration changed to two turns and uh, increased TP cost to 60 because the CPU wasn't using it properly. Yeah, they would always just, just keep turning on um, liftoff at the end of their turn, and then it would get completely wiped off by their next one. Uh, apparently it runs off a system where it calculates like, how long it takes based off recovery time ticks, uh, rather, than, um, uh, rather than actually counting a turn. So I can see why that ends up being a little bit confusing in some cases. Alright, so the uh, Chaldea got removed from the shop because it's a craftable now. Uh, Archimedia's Grog got added to the shop. It's a tier 2 non-upgrade remedy, so it should be purchasable. Yeah, that's true. Never did understand that one. Uh, uh, that's uh, the fear uh, removing item, if I recall. Uh, let's see, standardized arcana prices based on spell level. Okay, that's good. Adjusted the rewards for auctioning monsters. There's no golem class marks anymore, but you can get food consumables again, and some items are better, but you get less of them. Most notably, Cyclopes became avid collectors of glass pumpkins, so that's another method of getting them. Uh, that's actually the funny thing. I was able to uh, was able to go and buy several more pumpkins. That here. Uh, by the way, I did end up selling Obda because, well, they were almost dead, and they were really not holding up as well as Berta was, so sorry if you're a fan of them. Plus, also, I was kind of getting a little bit limited on people slots, so they're gone now. Um, did I use the food item that they gave? I think I did. There was a food item that they gave. Maybe it's over here someplace. Oh, oh dragon snakes are still there. They've been there. Braced Skewer, yeah, that was one of them. Yeah, that one gives dodge, that one gives strength, and uh, these are really, really useful if, um, if you want to apply some of the weirder strategies. Uh, oh yeah, and 38 pumpkins now. So. There's actually a reason to have pumpkins around, and you know what, I think this actually makes pumpkin farming pretty reasonable. Because I don't think I sold that many um, uh, Cyclopes, but there were 10 of them in the shop, so however many were needed for that. And then Void Orb, um, I understand I need to go through this place in order to be able to craft that Void Ring thingamajig. I'm not sure, that's what I know. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that went over just about everything here. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to show some of the, some of the better skills that people were using. Uh, so, I have to say, first of all, uh, trying out these different classes, so far, okay, I, I mean, Necromancer hasn't done much. Um, friggin' Balder Golem is just an insane wall. 
I mean, it's stats aren't very good, and it's still function. I mean, it's at friggin' seven, and it was able to tank stuff from thirties. So that's pretty useful. Um, oh yeah, I made Sarah back into an archer now. It's actually pretty good with the repeating crossbow there. Uh, what else? Okay, uh, Deneb's thing. I haven't gotten many of her abilities yet, but uh, here we go. Magic time. Uh, this thing can can work while silenced, though I'm not really sure why you'd need to. Uh, so, and yeah, she gets her abilities to restore MP here, so pop those on later. Um, now, as far as the shaman goes, apparently they're supposed to be just a pretty good caster, and they get access to some unique stuff. I haven't noticed any new abilities on her other than um, uh, the nature's touch here, which should be good. I, I don't know. I'll test him more by next time. Uh, basically, I ran into a situation here where I was hoping to grind everybody up a bit more, and a bunch of stuff came up, so I'll be doing that by next time. Um, let's see, Lich stuff. Apparently just Salvation available on him, uh, so he hasn't been probably ground up either, but yeah, Cash was pretty friggin' amazing, I have to say. Just because this ability is really good, she's tanky enough at this point to at least take a hit or two at her current level. Um, she can still output a pretty decent amount of damage, and yeah, this thing, friggin' bind and silence on everything around. So, really useful. And uh, I think that's everything except for uh, Ozma. Her over real quick. And yeah, I'll be, um, like I said, I'll be getting back to this stuff later. Uh, hopefully should be round up by next time. Just wanted to go over the, the uh, patch notes and everything, and uh, see you at that point.